When it comes to the size of what you can print on a 3D printer, don't believe what the manufacturer, any manufacturer, tells you. One of the most fundamental decisions you can make when choosing a 3D printer is the size of the build area. While printer prices vary for many different reasons, it's pretty much a constant that the larger the build area, the more expensive the printer. I'm David Gewertz. In this episode of DIYIT's 3D printing discovery series on ZDNet, we'll take a look at the different build areas available for different 3D printers, and then I'll take you into the dark underbelly of the 3D printing world. What manufacturers don't want you to know, the truth about 3D printer build areas. This was a much bigger and more complex project than I expected, and it took a whole lot of filament to produce the build area samples I'm going to show you. So before we get started on the details, I'd like to shout out a thank you to the folks at ColorFab for providing the filament used in these examples. I'd also like to shout out to MakerBot, Ultimaker, Lulzbot, DreamMaker, and NewMatter for providing unrestricted access to their printers so I could perform these tests. Put simply, when a manufacturer specifies a maximum print area, also known as a build area, it's the maximum size of an object the printer can theoretically print. Technically, a 3D shape that's not equidistant on all sides isn't a cube, it's a cuboid, or a convex polyhedron bounded by six quadrilateral faces. I know, right? I designed and printed cuboid shapes that represent the maximum build areas for each of these printers. Here's what the build areas look like for the five printers. I'll post each of these on Thingiverse with links in the show notes and the accompanying article on ZDNet. Here they are on the bench. You can start to see how they relate to each other in size. From large to small, this is from the MakerBot Replicator Plus. This one is from the Ultimaker 3. This one is from the Lulzbot Mini. This one is from the Overlord Pro Plus, And this is from the New Matter Mod T. Another way to look at these is by stacking them together. You can really see how they differ in size when placed inside of each other. Also, don't confuse what may look like available build area with actual functional build area. As you can see with this Overlord Pro, it looks like the model of the Vanderbilt Mansion would print. But if you look at the actual buildable area, the Mansion just won't fit. A mighty fine stack of 3.5 Yoda heads would fit in the Overlord's build area, but not the Vanderbilt Mansion. On the other hand, the Mansion does easily fit in the build area of the Lulzbot. As I alluded to at the beginning of this episode, there's a lot about build areas that are misleading. Of the five vendors, not one specified a maximum print size that I was actually able to print. On the MakerBot, the full cube I started to print began to disintegrate near the end, and I wasn't able to complete that print. On the Overlord, Cura wouldn't accept the dimension specified on the DreamMaker site, except for the vertical y-axis dimension. When I printed a test bar, the Overlord Pro wasn't actually able to meet that height and caused a very messy jam. New Matter's Slicer accepted a model for printing, but after two tries, you can see just how messy the results were. Once I reduced the model size, it eventually printed. In the case of both the Lulzbot and the Ultimaker, Cura simply wouldn't accept a model size for the maximum printable area described in the specs for each printer. After a lot of test prints, here's what I found. On the MakerBot Replicator Plus, the specified maximum print size was 295mm long by 195mm deep by 165mm high. Actual print area was 292mm long by 192mm deep by 165mm high, so length and width were 3mm smaller than specified. On the Ultimaker 3, the specified maximum print size was 215mm long by 215mm deep by 200mm high for a single extruder. This machine supports using two extruders at once. For a dual extruder setup, the specified maximum print size was 197 millimeters long by 250 millimeters deep by 200 millimeters high. I tested with both extruders active, and my best results were 185 millimeters long by 188 millimeters deep by 200 millimeters high. So length and width were more than a centimeter smaller than specified, at least for a true rectangle. Ultimaker says that you can increase this a bit if you have longer areas in the middle, but you can't go all the way out in the corners. In any case, like the other vendors, the company didn't meet its published spec. On the Lulzbot Mini, the specified maximum print size was 152mm long by 152mm deep by 158mm high. The actual print area allowed by Cura was 145mm long by 145mm deep by 158mm high, 
so length and width were six millimeters smaller than specified. The Overlord is interesting because the Delta architecture means it should print cylinders that have a larger diameter than the length and width dimensions of a cuboid. That said, for consistency's sake, I went with squared edges. Dreammaker specifies 125 millimeters long by 125 millimeters deep by 280 millimeters high. The width and height weren't even close at 79 millimeters by 79 millimeters. Even though I'm using a taller Overlord Pro, this was the only printer that completely failed at its specified height. Instead of 280 millimeters, the best I got without making a mess was 255 millimeters. Essentially, the Overlord's maximum specified print area was about 25% more than reality. Finally, there's the New Matter Mod T. Although the New Matter Slicer accepted a print designed at its maximum print size of 150 millimeters long by 100 millimeters deep by 125 millimeters high, the results were a mess. I finally managed a print that was 145 millimeters long by 95 millimeters deep by 125 millimeters high, so the Mod T lost about five millimeters off the X and Y axis. So now that you've seen the results of my little study, what does it all mean? First, don't freak out too much about the fact that specified maximum build dimensions and the actual ones are slightly different. In most cases, the difference is a centimeter or less. That said, if you're buying a 3D printer for a project that has a tightly dependent size and you're dependent on certain dimensions, you should make sure to factor into your decision the fact that the build area documented in the specs is likely to be optimistic by about 5 or 10 percent. If you're particularly dependent on an exact size, ask the vendor to print a part sample to see what the machine will actually produce. Beyond that, if you're in the market for a new 3D printer, think carefully about how much build area you really need. Since build area is one of the most fundamental drivers in printer price, you can save money and get a lot more capabilities in a printer if you're willing to sacrifice some build area. Conversely, if you need to print larger objects, you'll likely or definitely need to be aware that size does matter when it comes to your buying budget. And with that, I'm David Gewurz for DIYIT's 3D Printing Discovery Series on ZDNet. Thanks for joining us on this voyage of discovery. If you want to be notified when more videos in this series become available, hit the subscribe button over there. If you liked what you saw, all the cool kids are tapping the like button, so feel free to give it a click if you feel so moved. Have a great day and build something great!